Hello everybody. Welcome to For Drummers Only. Okay, we're going to talk about two different drummers. First we're going to talk about Sandy Nelson. Get done with that. And we'll talk about Mr. Tony Cerrone. Sandy Nelson. I learned about Sandy Nelson through his recordings as a very young little boy who found himself interested in playing drums at the age of six, that would be me. And I picked up on his record, Let There Be Drums, because he had the same first name as my brother, Sandy. I brought it home and, man, I thought that album was all I needed to know about drums. <laughs> If you've ever heard it, I think every drummer has had a listen to Sandy Nelson at one time or another. He was born in 1938 in California. His first recording was with the Renegades on the single Geronimo, which charted regionally. Nelson attended high school with Jan Barry and Dean Torrance, who became surf rockers. Jan and Dean. Nelson attained session work. He played on AM hits, To Know Him Is To Love Him, by the Teddy Bears, Alley Oop, by the Hollywood Argyles, and A Thousand Stars by Kathy Young and the Innocents, and many more. His own song, Teen Beat, went to number four in 1959. And Let There Be Drums, the album, went to number seven. At the end of 63, Nelson was in a motorcycle accident. He lost his right foot to amputation, but kept playing and recording until 1975 when he retired. He learned piano and continues to play today and he is over 80. His album Let There Be Drums in 62 was a must for nearly every student of the drums. Anyone who learned, want to learn how to play a drum set, that's how you did it back then. Certainly myself included. And he played with a bunch of different people, I mean, but I think he was best known for his solo styles and for his albums with his own original music on there. It was very, very topical of the times of the late 50s and early 60s. You're not gonna find anything more typical of that particular era in terms of percussion. Sandy Nelson was an important person in the development of the drums and drum solos especially. Now, on another note, no pun intended, Mr. Anthony J. Cerrone, who was born in Jersey City in 1941, his introduction to me came through my drum teacher. That was Mr. Bill Laverack. This instruction book of snare drumming etudes is still found on music stands all over the world. It was written when Cerrone was a student at the Juilliard School of Music. Tony Cerrone studied drums with William Laverack, name dropper Pete, who is also from New Jersey. Laverack had been in the Marine Band and was looking for students. Now Laverack, also a Juilliard graduate, helped his student to enroll in 1959 and Cerrone attended for six years under the tutelage of Saul Goodman, 
was a timpanist for the New York Philharmonic. Goodman helped Sarone become a percussionist for the San Francisco Symphony in 1965, where he stayed for three decades. He played for many world-class conductors, including Seiji Ozawa, Ido DeWeart, Herbert Blomstedt, and Michael Tilson Thomas, and guest conductors Leonard Bernstein, Igor Stravinsky, Aaron Copeland, Eugene Ormandy, Kurt Massu, Raphael Kubelik, and James Levin. While with the San Francisco Symphony, which had a 28-week season, Cerrone began teaching at San Jose State University. Cerrone taught Ralph Humphrey, who became a drummer with Frank Zappa. In 2001, Cerrone became professor of music and chairman of the percussion department at the Jacobs School of Music at Indiana University, and he held this post until he, he retired. He wrote his Portraits of Rhythm in 1963. He has since published 90 books, solos and ensembles for drums. And in the early 60s, Tony Cerrone held percussion seminars at the Montclair Studio of Music. And that, my friends, is where, as a drum student, I met him in the summer of 63. There were 12 or 13 young drummers in the ensemble, all with snare drums on stands of many different colors. My gold sparkly snare drum was one of these we all got copies of Portraits in Rhythm in its red jacket. It was advanced study, too much for me at age nine, but I saw the book again when I was 15 and became a student of none other than Bill Laverick, Cerrone's teacher, who would use Cerrone's book as a practice text. So now, I was to learn these exercises. Mr. Laverack was a teacher in the Parsippany School District. I saw him once a week for over a year. Now, I do not remember if Mr. Laverack ever knew that I had once been a young student of Tony Cerrone's. Bill Laverack was a great influence on me. He taught me many things about music, but not on a drum set. It would be up to me to translate what I'd learned from these guys to drum set work. And I like to think that I accomplished that. Funny story, I had another drum teacher after Mr. Laverack named Robert Ayers and he worked at the Caldwell High School School of music program, I needed to get a brush up with my <coughs> timpani since I was to be a timpanist at West Essex High School in the orchestra and the band, and the concert band. So I needed to know how to do that. So I went to see Robert Ayers and lo and behold, he gave me Tony Cerrone's red book as a snare drum practice and also, you know, Tiffany books as well, but he was amazed, if I can use that word, he was astonished when I started playing exercises out of Tony Cerrone's big red book. And he thought I was sight reading. I gotta tell you, these exercises they kind of jump around in the time signature a lot. And I didn't have any problem with that because, you know, I'd been through the exercises with Mr. Laverack. So 
So it was up to me to tell Mr. Ayers whether or not I had seen these exercises before. And I think perhaps maybe I did not and let Mr. Ayers think that I was a phenom. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, not a phenom. I like to think you helped me to become a good drummer. But I was never a phenom. Thanks everybody for being with me. What do you think of my comparison between Tony Cerrone and Sandy Nelson? Both from pretty much the same time period, completely different ways of going about their business. See you next time on 